Hi there, I'm back one more time with my waffle iron. Uh, I know I said in the last, um, my last video that that was my conclusion of my <laughs> waffle maker review, but I just had a little brainstorm uh, and I wanted to share it with you guys if you're interested in doing this. Um, the one or the, the main reason I wanted to buy a Belgian waffle maker um, because I really love the thin ones uh, the most, is because I wanted to, to waffle other things besides, well, waffles, uh, as, you know, in the sweet for breakfast variety, if you know what I mean. Um, and I have, a, I made waffles yesterday again, and it was, it was that same basic recipe from the user booklet that you get with the machine. And I liked it a lot. It makes nice, beautiful, fluffy waffles. And here's the reason I like to keep it plain. And even if a recipe calls for vanilla, I try to omit it if, you know, if especially if it's going to make a lot of batter because I love to have plain leftover batter to do something like this. Um, I did forget some spray. Normally, by this point, I wouldn't bother with the spray, but because there's going to be cheese involved, I want to make sure nothing sticks. So, and I'm going to do olive oil spray this time, so a little bit different. So I have a little bit of batter left, and it's very, very plain, so I can do whatever I want with it. My waffle iron is warmed up because the light is now out. All right, so I'm just going to give this a really light spray of some olive oil spray. All right. Then I'm going to put my batter in. Okay, here's the fun part. All right, I'm going to make a pizza waffle. So I have just a few little pieces of pepperoni. And then I have some mozzarella cheese. I just sliced that just because it was quicker and easier. And then I'm just going to put a few little few little drops, <laughs> if you could call that drops, just a few spoonfuls of batter on top just so that the cheese isn't, you know, going to be directly against the top grid here, which will soon be the bottom as soon as I flip it. So I have a feeling this is going to be too much batter, but well, I just want to kind of spread that out to cover my filling a little bit. Okay. Well, let's see how this goes. I'm pretty sure this is going to spill. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to close it. All right. So we're going to flip. I'm going to set my timer. All right. So, I'm going to set it for four minutes, and I'll be right back when it's just about done. So hold on. Okay, I have one minute left. I just got the beep. And it is really steaming a lot. I'm pretty sure I put too much batter in there, but, you know, <laughs> I don't think it's a real big deal. It, it spilled a little bit out the other side, but, it's, but I cleaned it up, and it just, it just literally wipes and peels right off of the uh, of the housing so so this should be interesting I've done ham and cheese waffles I've done um, baked potato waffles that had leftover mashed potatoes in it with cheese and chives and sometimes with and sometimes without ham if I happen to have you know like one or two pieces of sandwich ham leftover it's not enough for a sandwich um, but it's perfect for to use up on something like this and it's like having a grilled cheese sandwich, um, but in the waffle maker, it's fabulous. I'm not one of those, oh, there we go. I'm not one of those people that makes the entire batch of waffles from the batter and then freezing or refrigerating the extras because when I, I'd have really bad luck reheating them. I know a lot of people do that and they love it, but whenever I reheat mine, they either don't get the crispiness back or they completely dry out. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but let's take a look here. Oh, that is gigantic. <laughs> but look at how brown it is. 
Ooh. All right, let's um let's pull this out of here. Okay. Ah ha. There we go. Okay. That is a gigantic, my God, it's like the size of a personal pan pizza. <laughs> and, you know, you look at it and you're thinking, wow, that's a great looking waffle. I have no idea uh, what kind of filling is in there. So none of it oozed out, which is interesting. None of the cheese or anything. All right, so this is really hot. So I am actually going, oh, and crispy. I'm actually going to cut this open because I don't know that I want to, um, I want to tear that open with my fingers with hot cheese in there. So I'm going to get a knife real quick here and just sort of cut into this here. Oh, there's, oh, look at the pepperoni and the cheese. can't get over how thick this is. This is, this has got to be like an inch and a quarter, maybe more. <laughs> it's incredibly thick. Okay. Oh, look at, look at that. You can see the cheese and the pepperoni kind of peeking out there. <gasps> That's my first bite. Oh man. <laughs> that is so good. You have got to try this. This is just, this is so good. Mm. So, I, you know, that would be great. You know, after I put it in there and closed it and I paused the video, I thought, oh, why didn't I put like some oregano or something in there? Although it really doesn't need it. But it's kind of like a, you know, a pizza version of, of, a, of a grilled ham and cheese. And it's not greasy because you don't have all the butter and whatnot all over. It's not oozing all that oil. But you get the same crispy, hot, melty satisfaction of a grilled cheese, which is which is great. So just wanted to share that with you guys and hope again, hope this is helpful. Don't overload the iron like I did. I had just that little bit of a little bit more than one waffle's worth of batter left over, but oh well. It just peeled right off, so everything's good. So again, have a great day, and if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up and I'm gonna eat my pizza waffle. See you later.